smoke right behind me. Oh, what's up? Hey, hey. How's it going? Good. How about yourself? Pretty good. I'm just trying to figure out my uh, vacuum cleaner. <laughs> uh, let's see, mine's going off too right now, so I'm like, I should probably put it away. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear mine right now? Mm -mm. No? It's no. super loud. It's emptying out the bin, so like the, the vacuum yeah. out and then empties the bin. And when it empties the bin, it's so loud. Really? Can you hear mine? Uh, very faintly. Yeah. Should probably put it away or hold up. Uh, the like tower thing is the best thing ever though. You got to get that. I know. That's the next investment. It's amazing. I was like the whole time I was thinking, man, if I could just like somehow get this thing to be fully automated and never have to touch it, that would be the best. And then right when I was thinking that they came out with the tower You're and like, I was like, yep. <laughs> The best. I wonder thing. when you're gonna have to actually empty it out though. I wonder if it's gonna be like in a year. So <laughs> we just emptied it out for the first time. Oh, you just time. did? Jeez, that's insane. First time. So that's and like six months. Yeah, wow. I think it was a little over. I think it was like seven months that it took for it to fill up that's pretty so much nice. all the way. And even then it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't totally full. It was probably like 90% full. Yeah. I probably could have let it go for another month or so. <laughs> fine. Crazy though. Freaking love it. Um, how are, how are things going? Have you been out recently at all? The like shopping or like, what have you been, what have you been doing other than obviously fitnessing? So much working out for Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Randy's like, like, damn it. <laughs> oh my gosh, how much longer do I have to be here? I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, actually we haven't gone, I mean, just to the grocery store and back. And then we went like on Fridays. Well, We've done it like a handful of times on Fridays. We've gone to a field in Leander and it's closed, but we still go in it. <laughs> oh, is that uh, the park that has like soccer fields and stuff? Yeah, it's actually, it works really well. And it's nice because like we just get out of the house. But yeah, it has, it's pretty like, close to our house. We've, I've gone over there a couple times to just yeah. like kick around the soccer ball. Yeah, yeah. So we've been over there, but that's the only thing really that we've done that and then the grocery store. Yeah. What's like the strangest face mask that you've seen so far? I've seen one with, um, I don't know if it was like a clown or. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, it's creepy. I was like, oh God. <laughs> wow. Like a clown. I don't know if it had blood or something or it was just like open mouth or it was kind of like it. <laughs> oh geez. Some like, people, man. Andy, this is weird. <laughs> I, I heard of, um, Actually, it was one of my friends that posted it up that he was, I think he was in line at a grocery store back in North Carolina. And it was somebody wearing like a Star Wars, like um, one of the stormtrooper masks. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was like, dude, that's a Halloween costume. That's not a mask. <laughs> well, they don't want to have to buy a mask. <laughs> yeah. We tried to go in. We didn't know there, it was like a rule. Um, was it? I, I guess it was like two or three weeks ago and we were like walking up to HEB and we're like looking around us and we're like I think we're the only ones without a mask and I was like I think it's okay like I think you can still go around without a mask on and we just like got closer to the door and then of course there's like a sign right there it's like you can't go in without a bandana or like a mask and I was like ah. <laughs> dang right. it that's pretty much like everywhere now like you have to have a mask almost yeah. anywhere you go but apparently, starting tomorrow, it's not going to be mandatory anymore. Yeah, I know tomorrow in, I guess it's Travis County. I don't know if it's Williamson County, too, or if it's, I don't know, I can't remember. But they're opening up a bunch of stuff. Yeah, which I'm like, let's see. You think, you think, it's, a, you think it's a bad idea? Uh, it depends. I don't know. I feel like people, once they get like a tiny little opening, they're just going to be like, ah, yes, freedom, and just go back to what they were doing. Especially the people like that haven't gotten sick or been affected by it. They're just like, I don't know what Corona is. Like, this isn't bothering me. So why should well, I? I mean, that's the majority of the population. Like yeah. most people have not been exposed to this. Most people have not yeah. Most people don't even have relatives that have been exposed to this. So yeah. it's it's not really relatable yeah, in that it's hard sense, for them so. to understand, I guess. Yeah. I mean I'm in, I'm included in there for sure. Yeah, like I, me too. 
I don't know. I, I think for me, it's kind of like, well, how safe should we be? How precautious should we be going back into the public and opening things back up? And yeah. so I don't know. It's all going to be trial and error, honestly. Like they're just going to have to, I mean, you're going to have to eventually open up something and just see what happens. So, I mean, I think the way that they're doing it is okay. So they're only doing like 25% capacity if the it's a restaurant or something. Yeah, so, that's what I heard. And then they're going to, um, like in two weeks, kind of sit down and see like what's happening with the statistics or whatever. Mm -hmm. See if like the numbers went back up or if they stayed the same or went down. So, yeah. Yeah, I think um, Governor Abbott kind of, I think he has, a, I don't agree 100% with his approach, but I agree with part of it, that if you have a such a large population, obviously spread out over such a huge space, right? Texas is massive. Yeah. Um, to kind of slowly open up things and slowly have uh, certain aspects of socialization brought back into play. Um, bit by bit, and then just kind of step back and be able to uh, diagnose how that went. Yeah. I think that's a good approach. I think if it's all at once, obviously, that would be a really bad one. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Especially here in Austin, I just feel like, I don't know, Austinites are very liberal, so we're just like, ah, I'll just do everything. <laughs> right. The time. There's been, I mean, there's been a lot of, uh, in Austin, there's been a whole lot of protesting for sure. Like uh -huh. definitely more here than I've heard or seen in Dallas or Houston or yeah. any other bigger cities, but. We got um, the melting pot here. So it's just like a bunch of just, you know, people from all around the world or all around the United States that come here. So. I know yeah. it's so it's diverse. Different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like opening up like tomorrow, May 1st, we're supposed to open up like movie theaters. What do you think about that? I don't know if that's such a good idea. I mean, it's the same thing though. It's like the 25% capacity, but I mean, that's the same as like being in a gym, you know, it's like very close quarters. So yeah. um, that'd be interesting. But I would I gotta start somewhere. Yeah, I guess so. I, I don't know. I, I would kind of wonder, like, is it a better idea to open places like movie theaters or is it a better idea to open retail or is it a better idea to open gyms? I mean, all of these places, no matter what they are, are going to be exposed to some sort of germ factor. I mean, like, and, retail, like clothing, everyone's touching the clothing everywhere, touching stuff. So right, like, that wouldn't be the best idea sifting through things and whatnot yeah. but you have that at the grocery store too that's true that's true very true so, i don't know i think it's it's it's, a, it's gonna be really interesting to see like what the results are from that yeah uh, and from opening things back up slowly like to have gyms at like a 25 percent capacity i feel like is going to be extremely difficult especially for like big public gyms like a crossfit gym you could probably manage that a little bit better because you could have online check-in yeah the community is a lot more interwoven like at streamline we could do something where you could have like you know hey we're only going to have classes of five or something like that you can get in contact with all the members compared yeah. to yeah. golds or lifetime where it's a little bit harder there's so many more members <laughs> exactly you you don't want to be waiting in line to get in a gym like people want to go to a gym get a workout in and get out yeah that would be that'd be really strange to start seeing lines in front of like the ymca <laughs> or something like that like this is yeah. weird <laughs> yeah, weird um yeah but the gyms aren't supposed to open up until after this first phase right like they're not even yeah, like, that's like the gold gyms that are doing that, but not like the CrossFit gyms, or I don't know. Yeah, that's my understanding. Like, the I think the next phase of it is basically going to be like they're going to start rolling out um, other non essential businesses that will start to slowly open back up at percentage capacity, like you were talking about. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's been really weird, though, just to see like different people's perspective on, you know, how to how to handle that, because obviously you've got a lot of small businesses and small enterprises that make up the majority of our economy. Like you have, I mean, well, it doesn't matter, yeah, especially here, 
Yeah, exactly. Especially here. Like, uh, I mean, Austin, Texas is like the, you know, foodie, uh, small business, food truck capital of the world. Yeah. You've got all of these people, all of these companies that are trying to get back on their feet. I mean, it doesn't matter who it is, whether it's a, you know, restaurant, food truck, gym, um, other small business, whatever, like, how are they going to all of a sudden go from zero to a hundred? Is that how it's going to look? Or do you think it's going to be kind of slower? I don't know. Well, so my mom told me that, um, they're actually raising the taxes for the small businesses. So it's a lot harder for them to even stay open right now. So I don't even know. Oh, like wow. Some of them might even have to close down because they're like, I can't even pay for the taxes right now. So how am I supposed to reopen? Man, that's crazy. Does your mom have a small business? No, well, yeah, they do. So her and her husband do, but her husband helps out with like other small businesses or that's kind of what he's doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's what they've been telling him. He's like, ooh. Gosh, that's, I feel like that's just, that's like the absolute worst thing that they could do is for companies like small businesses to be hit even harder. Even like harder. that doesn't make even any sense. Never, everyone's getting hit right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I think they're having a sense. really hard time, really hard time, depending on what it is. Um, and like CrossFit gyms are the same way. They're, they're a small business. So yeah. But it I think it just depends on the people that you have that are like regular customers or whatever it happens to be like CrossFit. We've been able to stay in touch with a lot of people and like keep them going. But maybe with some businesses, they can't do that the same way. So it's just going to be that much harder for them to even stay open or reopen. Right. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to be really, really difficult. I mean, <clears throat> on top of everything that's already going on, just to keep yourself afloat and then have an additional expense added in on top of that. Yeah. That doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right. I, I my, the thing that I don't understand is how come the, they didn't push out um, like rent and mortgages for places like that. Just yeah, put have. three months, like instead of, you know, you can back end it and just add it on to, you know, whatever existing, um, rent you have due or mortgage you have due instead of sending out some sort of stimulus that is pretty minimal yeah. um, and expecting that to help versus just pushing things out a little bit. They didn't, they don't have anything for, for them at all. Cause like even for the apartment complex that I'm in, there's an email that's like, Hey, if you need to push back your, your rent, you can, or whatever, obviously you're gonna have to pay it back in the, in the long run. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so really they might good. have that for the small businesses too. Yeah, I, I'm I'm sure that some I'm sure that some do. And that's really awesome to hear that for like your apartment complex that they made that an option. That's really great. Yeah. Um I know for a lot that was not the case. Bills too. Yeah. Um I haven't I haven't talked to too many people. I know that one of my friends um that is in San Diego that owns uh, CrossFit Bear Republic downtown, mm -hmm. his uh, landlord was not willing to budge. So they're still having to continue to pay rent downtown San Diego, which is not oh. cheap. No, that's expensive. And then, <laughs> yeah. And then on top of that, you know, like their, their gym is entirely shut down. Like they're just doing the remote um, stuff. Uh, yeah, home, at home good. workouts. Yeah. Just like Streamline's doing. So like the revenue is definitely taking a hit. And on top of that, they're still having to pay their existing rent. Oof. Yeah. I wonder if uh, Streamline's in the same boat. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't talked to Austin and asked him about that. I hope that there's some sort of agreement that they've been able to come to, but I don't know. I yeah. have no idea. Um, how is that like... How has this impacted um, companies that you work with and that you're sponsored by? And like, I know there's a lot of businesses that you work with hand in hand, but like how have they reacted to this and been like, hey, we're trying to push product or we're trying to discount product or here's how we want you to handle it? Yeah. Um, well, honestly, so nothing's really changed on my end, which I'm super thankful for. Um, but as far as like the sponsors stepping up and like trying to help out, there's been a lot of help. So like Born Primitive's done something where they're giving back to the gyms. Um, then also I'm going to be posting something today with Bear Complex. And it's the same, same idea with like O2 and Bear Complex and some other company. Um, nice. And they're just trying to give back to the gyms. Like it's called the Stay and, or what is it? 
the stay for May movement. So yeah. um, it's cool to see like kind of the CrossFit community and the sponsors like coming together and working together to help keep the gyms open. Um, so that's been awesome. So I was really worried at first, like the first two weeks that this pandemic kind of hit, I was like talking to my manager and I was like, I feel bad for like posting things. Like I don't want to post things <laughs> like step on people's like feet or just like being sensitive or whatever. And he's like, it's like, yeah, I understand where you're coming from, but you can still like post. And then like, as the weeks went on, it was like, oh, okay, I, I still can. But at first I was like, oh, I'm kind of like, I was like walking on eggshells. Cause I was like, I really don't want to like upset anybody <laughs> about it. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's like, how sensitive should you be? Cause yeah. like it's uncharted territory. So like, yeah, what do you so, do? Yeah. I didn't know if like people were just going to be like, especially nowadays, like people just get really sensitive about everything. So it's like, Oh man, like I don't want to post something wrong. And then people just like start unfollowing me and start hating on me. And <laughs> like, oh gosh. <laughs> but right. One thing you say could set off a, yeah. a group of people and then it just kind of snowballs from there. You never know. But thankfully that has not been <laughs> what's been going on. But That's yeah, good. I think like a bunch of my sponsors have really stepped up and like just tried to help out with all the gyms. So it's been really cool to see that. That's good. Yeah. The I feel like the the support, like, I mean, I've seen so many support stories within different gyms that I've been a part of over the years. And it's really cool to see that. Like, I mean, I think Streamlines probably is the strongest just because the community is so interwoven and there's such like a good underlying support system there. But everybody has different ideas, like how to, you know, post up workouts and how to support people who are, you know, may not be in the best financial positions and supporting them with food and supporting them with, you know, hey, can we go get something for you? What can we do? What can we help um, you out with specifically? Yeah. It's really, really cool to see that. And then like those companies too that prop up the whole idea of fitness and CrossFit and all that stuff, they're right along with them, you know, like those companies, like you're talking about like Bear Complex and Born Primitive, like giving back to the gyms. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I was happy to see that. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think the, like, that's really like highlighted the, it's real. I think this whole thing is really highlighted the amount of interwovenness that there is within this tiny little fitness community, you know? Yeah. Yeah. CrossFit's very small. A lot of people don't even know what CrossFit is. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, most people don't like, I mean, we like our neighbors next door, I guarantee you they have no idea what CrossFit is. Probably have never heard of it. Yeah. Usually people are like, Oh, bodybuilding. I'm like, eh, kind of, but not really. <laughs> yeah, right? Not really anything like that. <laughs> Yeah. People, people, yeah, they just don't know. I mean, there's, there's so much out there. There's so much crazy stuff out there and it's like, it's just a small bubble that, um, I mean, a lot of people could benefit from, but a yeah. lot of people just don't really know, like, cause they see it and probably get a little bit scared by it. But the community is really, really cool to see how they've, I mean, everybody's come together so well, um, through this whole thing, but, but yeah. Um, have you, have you felt like within your, within the scope of your programming and what you've been doing so far, like, have you felt like there has been kind of a plateau or have you felt like there's been certain things that you've excelled at more in your overall fitness um, or things that you're like, man, I cannot wait to get back to the gym and get on a ski erg or something like that, you know? <laughs> uh it's definitely been like an up and down kind of thing like for a while I was like yeah yeah doing good feeling good and then last week I kind of it just hit me and I'm just like ah oh, doing the same exercises over and over again <laughs> it's more of like the strength stuff that I'm doing it's just like you're limited to how much strength stuff that you can do so like we've been doing a lot of floor press and I'm like ah oh, I like looked at Randy the other day and I was like, I'm so sick of this. He's like, me too. <laughs> we're, like, we're trying to change it up, but like, I don't have a bench. So it's like, we can't do like bench press or we're only limited to doing floor press. Yeah. Uh, just trying to change up the stuff in there. Uh, so yeah, we kind of hit like a little plateau last week and I definitely felt it energy wise too, where it's just kind of like you hit a slump and you're just like, oh man. 
Um, so it'll definitely make me appreciate the gym a lot more. <laughs> but oh, for yeah. a while, I just felt like I was in a good rhythm. But I think that it just happens even like in the gym where you just get into really good rhythms. And then there's this points where you're just like, oh, man, the motivation's just not there because I've been through that so many times. And you yep. just have to pull through it. And sometimes it can be like a week and sometimes it's a month where you're just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I'm hoping this one's a little bit shorter than other ones, but right. it's like second weekend and I'm just like, oh man, I need to change something up. <laughs> <laughs> Something's got to give because yeah. I'm doing this again and it's still boring. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's that too. And I'm limited with my ankle still. So like, I still can't run on my foot with my Achilles. So I oh, mean, yeah. How is that? Like perfect time to run. Um, it's okay. Like I went and got a checkup. When was that? On uh, it was like in the middle of April, and they said it was like healing fine, but it's just a slow process with the Achilles. Yeah. So I don't go in for another three months, and it's just kind of slowly building the stuff back up. And it's like sometimes I can run on it, like if it's in between like a wad, and I'm going from like upstairs to downstairs, it's fine. Um, but if I'm trying to like jump on it in place, it's just I feel it, and I'm like. Ah, so I still can't do like double unders or like go on runs or box jumps. So there's like some stuff where I'm like, man, I really want to do that stuff, but I can't. So that right. kind of limits me with the amount of exercises I can do as well. I'm just happy I can squat though. Cause I was, I was worried there for a little bit where it's like at the bottom of the squat where it was tight. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ah, oh, this is so annoying. <laughs> this is so annoying. <laughs> But, um, cause it's never been like a bad pain. It's always been like at a, like a four out of 10 pain scale or a three out of a 10 manageable. But, yeah. It's always manageable, but it's just there. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't want it to rip cause it's so tight. Yeah. So I'm like kind of, I don't know. So that's been like the frustrating part too, is I just, I love running. That's like one of my favorite things to do. So, and this is like a perfect opportunity to run is right now because we have so much time on our hands. So. That's right. pretty frustrating, but whatever. Did you used to run like before competitively or anything? Uh, not competitively. I mean, like I did it in high school. Um, I ran the one and two mile on track. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it was the only thing like that my back could take. Um, I couldn't do sprints or hurdles because like it hurt my back for some reason, but long distance was okay. Huh. It didn't make any sense to me. But um, so I did like half marathons and 10Ks and 5Ks and stuff like that. And then cross country too. So I've always like had the running background. So that's why, like, I think that's always helped me like at the CrossFit games when there's like a running event, I know that I can kind of capitalize on that because the yeah. heavy lifting is never going to be my thing. <laughs> so, yeah. so, I, and I just like, I just enjoy it too. It sucks when you take a break from it and you try to go back to running, but uh, once you get into like your little running groove then it feels, feels good. It feels good. Yeah. I have a lot of friends that they are kind of in that same boat that they used to run in high school or they ran in college. And then after taking some time off, they're like, there's just this weird thing. They're like, I got to run. Like something inside them is like, I have to run and I got to go like do this thing now. And yeah. so they'll like get back out there and run for a while and really get into it. And then it kind of tapers off again because it is one of those things that can potentially become really monotonous. And you're like, okay, I'm just running again. Right. Like, how do we change this up now? But like the runner's gene, I feel like is there for those people that were doing it competitively before. Yeah. Like, I got to get out and I got to run. It's like good therapy though. It's like, it's kind of like meditation in a way because you have to really like overcome your mind, especially when yeah. you're doing long distance running. And then you for finally sure. get to like this like freedom moment. I feel like every time you do more than a couple of miles. So it's nice. I like it but it's definitely yeah. hard when you take a break. Oh, <laughs> like I'm yeah. not looking forward to like trying to get myself back in shape into running, but I definitely I know. <laughs> I remember like back when I played soccer competitively and then taking off, you know, however many years from that, going back to running, I'm like, oh my God, this is so <laughs> hard. Yeah. yeah. I feel like things ridiculous. like as you get older, just get harder and harder to try to get back into. <laughs> exactly. And it's like one of those things too, like after you, I mean, it's like anything, like 
once you get back into it, it comes back to you, but it takes a while to get there and eventually, you know, get to a point where you're like, okay, this is actually enjoyable now. And I don't feel terrible about myself because I'm so out of shape. (laughs) So that's how I feel like after the CrossFit, uh, like after like a big CrossFit competition or like after the games, when I take off a month, I'm like, I hate taking off, but I know it's good for my body because my body needs it but I know how much it's going to hurt trying to get back into shape and then trying to be better than you were the year before too. And you're just like, yeah, this is going to hurt so bad. (laughs) But it feels good when you're there when you actually are in shape, but the climb just gets harder and harder and steeper and steeper. (laughs) Yeah. I remember when you came back from the games this past summer, you were like, right back into it. Like, let's take like a couple days off and then right back into it. And I was like, Oh my God. I, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, maniac. So hard. <laughs> it's so hard to take off. I'm like, God, it hurts. It hurts. It's <laughs> I don't almost know harder to take off than to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Depends on the year, but yeah, for sure. Yeah. I get that. Um, Cause you know, I'm like a professional CrossFit athlete. <laughs> almost there, Ben, right there. <laughs> Duality. 2020. Killing it. Killing it. <laughs> Um, have you heard any news about um, the games at all from like, I know that they said that they were going to go to like the ranch or something like that, but do you, have you heard anything else? No, honestly, I don't really follow CrossFit. <laughs> so I don't either really. <laughs> I, that. I like, I'll hear information more from like my mom than anybody else. Cause she like follows it die hard. Um, so she usually tells me if something's up or like my manager does too, but um that was like the last that I heard like I saw like my mom sent a screenshot of like the Facebook posts that CrossFit Games put up that was like trying to go to Aromas or something like that and so but I don't think they actually know I don't think yeah. anybody's actually gonna really know until the month of which is gonna suck yeah. I feel like in CrossFit everything's very last minute like in everything that I've dealt with um so I wouldn't expect this to be any different <laughs> as far as it being last minute. Yeah. I wonder if it's going to be some sort of a situation like um, like they're going to dramatize it a little bit and cut out the audience because, I mean, you've got even the NFL, which is massive, yeah. is saying, you know, into this season, we're probably not going to have spectator capacity like we've had in years prior. Like. Yeah. People are just not going to be filling up stadiums and coliseums like they used to, um, at least for for now, and maybe for for a, a while longer than we think. But it's Especially probably if there's like something going on in the fall. Like usually, there's like the flu season that comes around again. So yep, yep, exactly. That could that could definitely impact it for sure. But um, I wonder if it could turn out to be like a situation where CrossFit goes, hey what if we just kind of dramatize this and we can film the whole thing um, and, you know, we can have, you know, post uh, uh, post video editing and whatnot. So we can actually like highlight what we want to highlight and not necessarily have like this huge live presence of fans watching, but almost have it be something where it's like, um, I don't know. Have you ever seen uh, the rocks show on NBC, the Titan games? I've heard of it, but I haven't watched it. Okay. Yeah, I've only seen like a couple episodes, but I think like a premise like that where you have like athletes going against each other in competition could potentially work for CrossFit and they could continue to profit off of that. And obviously the athletes could continue to benefit from it too, because, you know, you would highlight strengths um, that people have and in competition, of course, it wouldn't be that same live feel. Um, even though you would still be competing live against somebody else, but it would diminish the amount of contact, you know, from having these huge audiences. Yeah. Um, So you want it more like a game show? It could be more like a game show. I feel like it already kind of is like a game show in some sense. (laughs) With the wild cards. I I felt like it was last year. A lot of people were saying that they're like, man, it's like almost like a game show with like all the cuts and stuff and the wild cards and all that. Yeah. That's kind of, okay. So you, you heard what expound on that feedback a little bit. Uh, I mean, that's all I heard really that people were just because of all the changes last year, people were complaining, obviously the entire like summer Mm -hmm. about like what to expect at the CrossFit games in 2019 and 
because it went from 40 to 150 like male and female athletes so like we we went up so many more numbers and then like the wild cards too and i think people were just like what are we are we this is it's a joke you know yeah um so i think a lot of people were kind of upset about that i think that if they were to do the wild card that they should just let the wild card go throughout the whole weekend oh huh you not give them money but just let them compete against the best of the best the entire weekend right just that to kind could of stack up you know yeah uh, that's a that's a that'd be really interesting to see like that could be a really good um way to test and almost kind of have like I mean, in uh, various other tests, you have a control, right? So that could be kind of like the control, as it were, and seeing that group or that person compete against these other stereotypical CrossFit athletes and how they stack up. Yeah, because like Hunter, the one that was the wild card for the guys, I don't think we, we didn't have a wild card for the women, but um, which that would have been interesting in itself. But like he got out because he couldn't really do the handstand walks, but he would have been really good at like the ruck run, you know? So to see right. what he would have stacked up on the ruck run or some of the other endurance events or like the swimming event on the last day that we did, that would have been just interesting to see. So, yeah. I mean, there's been so many of these big athletes, whether they're CrossFit athletes or professional, ex-professional athletes <clears throat> that have been on various other game show type fitness tests. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin's The Ranch. Have you heard of that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like that one. And then, you know, The Rock has the Titan Games. And there's, I'm sure there's others out there that I haven't heard of. But to have it kind of be something more like that, where you have a controlled um, video environment so they could actually film everything um, and actually have it be, you know, played back so that people could watch it and enjoy it. Um, but still have like all of the elements that you would see typically at the CrossFit games that you've seen in years past. You could still have all of that. Yeah. Um, it would just be obviously cutting down on the amount of contact for obvious reasons. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a, that'd be an interesting thought. I'm sure a lot of people would be pissed off if we did that. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm yeah. sure. I mean, I'm sure there, there would be the side where people would like that. And then I think like the diehard CrossFitters that have been watching the CrossFit games since 09 would be like, heck no. This is oh yeah. <laughs> no <Yeah>. way. <laughs> they would probably be very pissed off. They'd be like, dude, this is totally changing what this thing is. Like keep it how it's been for forever. You know, like I, I mean, I, I understand that. That would definitely make sense for, uh, for somebody who's been there for years and years and years to be like, this is all of a sudden changing. It's like, but dude, you have to change. Like mm -hmm. the times that we're living in, I mean, regardless of COVID-19 or not, yeah. are quickly changing. And to be adaptable yeah. and to be able to build things that are different, I think is, is the way to go. Yeah. Well, and that's what my mom, my mom had mentioned this too, like, it's just, we're not going to be the same after this. We're not like people yep. are going to realize that they can do stuff from home or work from home or like don't have to travel as much or like, I don't know. It's just, I don't think it's ever going to be the same going back after COVID. I think she's totally right. I think there's, I mean, there's a lot of things that we have recognized that have changed already. Mm -hmm. I mean, obvious things like, you know, having all of our meetings in virtual format now. Yep. Um, but <clears throat> I mean, if you have, if you take back and you, or you step, take a step back and you have like, you know, a perspective of like the news for, for instance, like the news has changed dramatically. I don't know, like people don't really think about that too much, but it's one of those things that's changed in, in such a huge way. Like if you look at the numbers of viewership and all of this stuff, that's definitely something to take to, into consideration. But also like, I mean, there's so many things that have changed about news and live reporting, people in a, a studio setting, who's actually listening to those people now. It's, it's a very quickly changing landscape. So I think your mom's right. Yeah. There's gonna be so many things that are gonna be different after this that we're that we don't even realize are going to stay different you know like the alcohol to go i'm just kidding. exactly exactly that's not going anywhere apparently texas is like oh that was a good idea we're gonna yeah, keep that great idea yeah i heard they're keeping it for like another month or something i was like it's gonna stay there's no way that i we're really strict on alcohol well 
compared to, I think, compared to most states, uh, except for Utah. Utah is very strict. Oh my gosh. Utah is like, you can't buy any alcohol between hours of five and 2 p.m. or something like that. Well, yeah. And like all the liquor stores are um, owned by like the state. And then if you go and order a drink at the bar, you can't have like an extra shot added to your drink either. It has to be only one shot and you have to finish your drink before you get the next shot. Yeah. It's, it's like crazy. crazy stuff like that. Utah is so strict. Yeah. So, but I mean, Texas too. So it, it's pretty crazy that they're actually doing like alcohol to go and that it, it could be a possibility that they keep it. <laughs> That'd be crazy. I think they might keep it. I think all of the companies smart. that like Postmates and um, like Grubhub, all of these companies, they're going to continue to grow. I don't think that's going to go away. I think that's going to be like more of a norm now. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it already was kind of, you know, like I had used, I had never really used favor until I got sick. Um, or during the open when I got like super ill to the point where like, I couldn't even get out of bed and I finally used it. And so it's just cool. Like you can use all those apps. And I mean, I'm like, man, freaking lazy, but at the same time, it's kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> that was back when you uh when you had COVID-19 right yeah, I, I felt like I did I told I told like Christina and Nikki that I was like dude I was probably the first one that had it I felt <laughs> it felt terrible I haven't been that sick in a very long time it was like body aches body chills fever just sweating up a storm like I tried to get out of bed and I'd be like yeah I'm okay I'm okay and I'd get up and I was like oh no not okay not okay <laughs> You didn't have any bat soup recently, did you? Bat soup? <laughs> <clears throat> what? I mean, that's that's pretty much like where they're saying this thing came from. I mean, that's the word, you know? Who knows? <laughs> it could have been it could have been a number of things from that crazy market in Wuhan. Who knows? Bat soup, huh? Nope. Yeah. Never had that before. <laughs> I mean, there's a bunch of speculation. People say it was grown in a lab. People say that it started in New York. People say that, you know, there's all sorts all of conspiracies. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there, oh my gosh. The amount of conspiracies that have come out of this thing and that have been highlighted by this are unbelievable. The internet is on fire right now. Yeah. I haven't even read any of them, but I'm sure they're probably crazy. <laughs> well, did you see um Recently, CNN released a, it was, I mean, it was a video of a UFO, a couple UFO videos that uh, were <clears throat> being held by the government and were unreleased videos that, you know, they were like, we're not going to release this to the public. They're not ready for it yet. We don't know what to do with it. We don't know exactly what it is. And they just released them like the other day. And nobody's paying attention to that because, Obviously, there's a lot of other things going on. Yeah, right there's now. too many like, other crazy things going on. <laughs> yeah, so they're like, oh, we'll just slip in that little, whoop, see what people do with that, just to kind of, yeah, <laughs> take off with that craziness. But yeah, it, it's there's so much there's so much crazy stuff that's going on right now underneath the surface of this that is going to impact. I mean, economies. It's going to impact our way of life, like we were talking about earlier, interactions, like that we don't realize right now that's just happening and rolling underneath our feet that we don't we don't think about. Yeah. You know, I just thought about <laughs> when you were saying that with the government is uh <laughs> not to change the subject or anything, but the office. We were watching it last night. Oh, it I was up, too. <laughs> it was the episode where um Michael like spread around all these rumors about people because there was like one that was actually true and oh, then, yeah. like Stanley has an affair or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> And then he's like, don't tell anybody. And he's like, oh, okay. And so he like goes around and tells rumors about everybody else. Not <laughs> <laughs> what the government's doing. It's like, well, I'll just, we'll just throw this in right now because it's a great time to do it. <laughs> one of the greatest shows of all time. And one of the yeah. greatest characters of all time, too. Yeah, it's hilarious. Oh, I didn't think it was going to be that funny. <laughs> and then it's just grown on me. The first yeah, season you're watching it for the first time, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> I think I am think I'm on my like third or fourth. Oh my gosh. Third or yeah, it is one of those shows that you can just watch over and over again. Christina had never really seen it either. And so we watched it all the way through like uh, maybe a year ago or two. And she was like, all right, this is actually kind of funny, funny. because at first she didn't appreciate the comedy. Yeah, yeah. It grows on you. It's like one yeah. of those things that you kind of have to like 
watch it a little bit to understand. Girls like like by the third season, or like the second, like the end of the second, third season is where I was like, ah, yeah, this is funny. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's like, oh, okay, and now I get the comedy. Now it's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> if you just step in and watch it like randomly, you won't. You probably yeah, won't get it. Yeah, it'll make no sense. I think that's always what I did before, and I was like, this is stupid. I'll never watch the show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, COVID brought out the the best in us, and now we're in season five. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. That's awesome. So between, obviously between working out, watching the office, <laughs> yeah. not going, not going to the store or anything like that, you guys are doing pretty well over there. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing good. I think Randy's going to stay for another month. Um, as far as it looks like, like he's always looking out with like the school stuff and making sure that he doesn't have to be back for anything specific, but he was going to have off in May anyways, because basketball is like an off season right now. Yeah. So uh, he was looking to come back down at the end of May anyways. So I was like, well, might as well just stay. <laughs> so for so sure. he should just, yeah. he should just move here. I mean, he I could, he would probably uh, right now, I guess it might be a little bit difficult for him to get a job at a university somewhere, but he, well, I'm sure he could find something. It's hard no matter what because it all depends on like the head coach and like if the head coach get, gets fired then everybody else gets fired and then they bring in the whole new staff so it's just it's always difficult. Yeah collegiate sports are very very strange very political. Yeah very very much so but yeah he, I mean that would be his dream is to like come over here and work at like UT or something but it's just it has to be like the perfect timing you almost have to get lucky. Yeah. Like, lots of stuff. But. Yeah, it's a weird timing game, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a few friends that are like in, most of them are track and field uh, coaches, but they're, they always talk about that. They're like, because I mean, they've moved around a couple times. And whenever they move around, it's like, it, they leave, and then everybody else leaves too. It's mm -hmm. like this huge, like mass exodus of like, whatever program was going on, like, it's University of North Carolina. Yeah, everybody's like, all of a sudden they le everybody leaves and then they have this whole new staff come in. And oftentimes when coaches leave, like in the middle of whatever, you know, off season, something like that, going into the next school year, a bunch of athletes, student athletes will also. Yeah. 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 We already had like a couple people, well, from his university he's working at, a couple people leave and then like six new people join. So it's just like this crisscross thing where, yeah. and I think it's making it easier too. I don't know what the rules are, but I think there's new rules or, that are either coming out or are out that you can kind of basically switch whenever you want to. Dang, that makes yeah. it even crazier. Yeah, but I mean, to a certain extent, because like you have to be there's still rules where like you have to be there for a year before you can play or you have to be redshirted and stuff. So if you switch every four years, you'll never play. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's, oh gosh. You'd just be like jumping around all over the place and never actually get playing time. Yeah. That would suck. But yeah, I think there's some new, newer rules or they're coming out that it's going to be a little bit easier for people to kind of switch to a different university. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well, he should, you should just tell him to stay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're saying. <laughs> I say you stay, so you stay. <laughs> That's what's happening. <laughs> We're already a month in, so. <laughs> I know, right? It's so weird. It's been, it's been like that long of a time since all of this has started. Very strange. And even longer for some people. Like I know in Houston, it's, it was like at the beginning of March completely. So yeah, they've been, they've been yeah. Out for a while. it was it was very strange. Like right when this whole thing started, I was actually in Houston and I was at the, there's like a big university hospital complex down there where you have like UT and Rice and all of these other big university hospitals that are all kind of in this conglomerate together. Mm -hmm. um, and I was down there for work and it was on, just happened to be on the day that I was down there that they announced like their first two COVID patients were at that hospital. That's crazy. So I was like, oh shoot. Like at the time I didn't really know, I mean, none of us knew anything, but no. I really was because I was in such close proximity and working with people that were potentially working directly with and having direct patient interaction. I was like, 
this is not good. Yeah, so I canceled my flight back. Um, instead of flying back to Austin, I drove back to Austin. I was like, I'm just going to minimize all of my contact with all humans as much as possible. And that week when I came back, I messaged Austin and I was like, Hey man, um, I was at a hospital. I just happened to be at a hospital where like the first COVID patients were coming in. So I think it'd probably be better if I just didn't coach yeah. this week. Yeah. Um, so fortunately, you know, he found somebody to, to fill in the space, but it was that first, that first week I was like, all right, this is, this is real. And that seems like it was like two years ago. <laughs> I know. Well, it's weird because like all of Randy's clients, cause he has another job too, as uh, like a personal training app online are all in like California and New York. And so before like hit here, he was hearing all that information and was kind of freaking out. And at first I was like, why are you freaking out like this? And then I finally like got on board and I was like, oh man, like this is, this is insane. Like this is getting yeah. crazy. It was, it, it was before it got crazy here. And I think like I was saying stuff to some people and they're just like, whatever. And I was like, dude, it's coming. I'm just saying it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, it's real. Yeah. Yeah. So he was like getting a lot of the information before it hit here, of, like how bad it was. And it's just like, oof. Yeah. He, that's, that's going to be really weird to be hearing that feedback and stuff through people that you're training and yeah. getting their perspective on like how severe it is in their particular community of, you know, wherever they're at in California or New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's pretty insane. Crazy. Well, I'm glad you guys are staying safe. Yeah. Um, continue to stay safe. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys soon at some point. Maybe we'll do a drive-by and just like <laughs> wave out the window or something like that. <laughs>